Welcome to the Manifesting Latina podcast, where you'll learn to unlock your incredible power of manifestation and connect deeply with yourself. I'm Dr. Norma Reyes, your guide and host, helping you manifest a life filled with purpose, abundance, and inner wisdom. Together, we'll dive into the art of manifestation, practical techniques, personal growth, and the magic of aligning with your deepest desires. No more feeling stuck or disconnected. It's time to awaken your inner manifester. Embrace your spirituality and create a life that truly resonates with your soul. Tune in each week to the Manifesting Latina podcast and begin to manifest your dream life. Hey everyone, welcome back. This is episode 109 and today I will be talking to you all about ways to shift your energy so that you can align yourself to your manifestations and I will be doing something a little different today because at the end of today's episode I will be drawing an oracle card from the Raise Your Vibration Oracle deck by Kyle Gray. So Make sure you listen to the end so you can hear this episode's oracle card. All right, y'all. So today, in the last few days, I've been working on raising my vibration. We are in between eclipses. My energy definitely went completely down. I have allergies or cold, whatever this might be. Either way, I was definitely very low energy, low vibration. And when that happens, you want to evaluate what is going on. You know, is it because you were overworking yourself? Is it just because there's an energy shift that happened with, you know, with or without your knowledge that you didn't go into alignment in, right? And it happens, you know, even myself, like I said, eclipse energy, um definitely shifted me in the sense of like I was walking on sunshines last week and this week was starting off with oh my gosh I have very low energy so when I have very low energy I slow down I highly recommend everyone slow down just tune into yourself and see what is going on of course you know this doesn't mean that you can put life on hold i have kids so i understand i have to get them ready i gotta do things for them still but i also talk to them and let them know i don't feel that great i don't feel that well so i can't do as much and they have learned and adjusted to understand what that means they are four and eight now and so now a few days have passed and my energy has gotten better. Yesterday, I did two things that I will share with you here in a bit that shifted my energy. And then today, I knew that I was going to do something similar. And then something else came up in between working on a few things. So I definitely wanted to make sure that this episode was the next one for you all because I know that you hear raise your vibration or good vibe zony or blah, blah, blah. <laughs> But it's like, what first is like, what does it even mean? What does it even mean? Which I'm going to get to that. But also, I want you guys to know that if you are feeling low energy, your mood is low, you want to take time to evaluate that because this is not an episode about, oh, just put that to a side, pick yourself by the bootstraps because that's not it at all. You still have to feel those feelings and process them and journal them. And if they are very hard for you to process, highly recommend going to see a professional. This can be a therapist, this can be a spiritual healer, you know, this can be someone that you can go to and talk to to help you process these heavy emotions. So that's that. Now, let me talk about energy. The law of attraction talks all about energy, you know, vibration, your emotional state, and how all of that, your feelings, your beliefs, attract what you like, right? Like attracts like. You may have heard this before. Law of attraction is focused on that your energy is going to attract similar energies, right? Like the person who's having a bad day and everywhere they go, everyone else is a jerk, Versus a person who's having a great day and everywhere they go, 
everything's great, right? Like, like attracts like. That's a very basic law of attraction thing. Then, of course, thoughts and emotions. Your thoughts, very similar to like attracts like, your thoughts are going to affect your emotions. So if you are thinking, God, I hate this day, then how are you going to feel? How are your emotions going to feel? And again, this is important to take it with I don't even want to say a grain of salt because it's important. Your thoughts are important and you do need to have uplifting thoughts. But if you are stuck in a loop of thoughts of like, this morning sucks, this morning is shitty (laughs) every single day, then you need to do something about it. Okay, why do I think this morning is shitty? And perhaps it depends on your sign. It depends on your upbringing. It depends on a lot of different things is why your thoughts may immediately default to that. And you may want to talk to someone. You may want to go get a natal chart reading. I will tell you, depending on your chart and where things are, you may be more optimistic naturally, or you may be more anxious, or you may be more, you know, the glass is always empty. Even if it's almost full, 90%, it's not 100%, so it's not full. You need to understand yourself, right? And then begin to combat that. Begin to have more and positive thoughts and i don't even want to use the word positive since it's it's overused uplifting thoughts thoughts that are going to uplift your mood in the morning so when you tell yourself this is a terrible morning say i just woke up it's a wonderful morning i have another day to accomplish the things that i want to accomplish and then you know your thoughts are going to affect your emotions your emotions may begin to also affect your thoughts so do a check-in with yourself how are you currently feeling if you're neutral great i will talk to you guys about the emotional guidance system and the spiral and two key words are content and boredom those are right in the middle and i'll touch on this here in a second but and i'll have links to that in my show notes because if you've never seen it before it can also help you understand what is a high vibe and a low vibe and really it's really just about your emotional state of mind so vibration and frequency each thought and emotion carries a vibrational frequency when your thoughts and emotions are aligned to your desires they're going to help you manifest them and make it come faster to you. Everything that you want to manifest is going to come to you when you are ready and open to receive it. So it can come very quickly or it can take years. It's that simple. And it's really gonna depend on how open you are into receiving it, how aligned you are energetically to it. So energy blocks, negative beliefs, self-doubt, fear, limiting beliefs, are going to create energy that hinders your manifestations. So you're clearing those blocks and shifting your energy towards a more aligned state to your manifestations. It's going to make you get your manifestations faster. You will always get your manifestations. It might just have to take five to 10 years because it might take you that long to make some of these energetic shifts. So I always want you to have hope that whatever you have in your heart's desire, it's going to come to you when you begin to make those shifts. Who cares if it takes five years to become a millionaire? I'll take it. (laughs) I'll take it. I'll wait five years to become a millionaire. You got to think about it that way, right? It's better late than never. Who hasn't heard that before? Okay. So energy, vibrations, and aligning. You need to practice shifting your energy. No one has ever taught you how to do that before. There's not a class. No one talks about that in school. All the people tell you is, you know, change your mood, change your attitude, change this. Like, but they don't actually teach you how to do that. So some of the typical techniques are, you know, visualizations, affirmations, meditation, gratitude, which I will have episodes on that. But I also want to give you other tools that maybe you're not hearing about that people aren't often mentioning that can help you shift your energy in ways that are much more simpler for you in ways that feel more aligned to you especially as 
um, the Latinx community, Latina, Latino, whatever you identify as, we change our energy way different than other people do. So this is another reason why I wanted to have this episode, because when I did some research for this episode, like, what are ways to shift your energy? And it's like gratitude, affirmations, meditation. And yes, yes, those do work. You do work. But if you're new to manifesting or if you're in a low vibe, you are not going to want to do those things, you know, and it takes practice to want to do those things. I've been practicing this since 2019, like actively practicing since 2019. And even before that, I was already practicing some meditation and some yoga before that. So probably since like 2015, I would say, maybe even a little bit before that. So almost 10 years, almost over 10 years that I've been practicing these skills. So I do feel the need to do them. But someone who is new to manifesting or who has been dabbling in it, that makes a difference too. If you do it like every once in a while when you're like, oh yeah, there's this manifesting thing. I want to try that out. Oh yeah, let me do this. But you don't actually have a manifestation practice. You're going to find it more difficult for you to do these things. You're going to find your body resisting. You're going to find your ego resisting doing them, especially because it doesn't seem like something that you, your family, or you grew up doing, which is okay. My family definitely did not grow up doing any of this. And no, no one still does that. Like I'm talking about like my my parents and siblings, they, they haven't. And if you've listened to episode before, I don't even talk to my sisters. So I don't know what they'd be doing, but I'm pretty sure my brother's not meditating or doing affirmations, but doesn't mean that the law of attraction isn't happening because a dude is definitely using it without his conscious knowledge, which we all are. We are all using manifestation and all of the laws of attraction and all the different laws because there is more than just the law of attraction that we don't even realize it. So now let me touch a little bit on the science of it. And then I will talk to you guys about how to bring up your energy when you're feeling low vibe. All right, so there is some science behind energy and manifesting. It really is. One of them is quantum physics. So this is a concept that energy in the context of manifestation draws parallels and can bring you things. If you haven't heard this before, I know it's going to sound a little wacky from one timeline to the other timeline. So the idea suggests that the act of focusing or observing on a particular outcome that you want to manifest can easily come to you through quantum physics. It's a big concept, YouTube it. I will look for a YouTube video to link into my show notes that'll make it very, very simple. But essentially, quantum physics says that what we believe and in what we're going to observe that it will come so if you have a box in front of you and it is closed right and you can practice this actually when you're looking for something and you're like i don't know where the hell i left this thing and if you take the time to just be like oh, I know, I know I put it in here. I know I did. I know I did. It's going to be there. And you're going to envision it before you even open that box. You open that box and it's there. Which trust me, I've done this before. (laughs) There's a really good book by Pam Grout that has you practice do that. So I'll put that in the show notes too, because yeah, that is also fun, fun manifesting stuff to do. So quantum physics says, you know, your thinking And what you believe you're going to observe is what's going to happen. Now, neuroplasticity is another way that talks about manifesting. It's the neuroscience. It talks about the brain's capability of changing and adapting throughout your life. And why is this important? That's because if you start to implant positive thinking and affirmations and change your beliefs that it is possible 
If we didn't have neuroplasticity, we would not be able to change ourselves. We would not be able to change our beliefs and in essence, not be able to manifest the things that we want that feel out of reach currently due to your thinking, your actions, and um, your emotions. So that's neuroplasticity. Then there's a whole field of positive psychology. I'm not going to talk about that, but it's about mindset, about practicing gratitude and how your overall well-being and mental health will help you attract what you are wanting, right? Will help you manifest those things that you are looking to manifest into your life. And of course, the placebo effect. Sometimes things just happen because we believe them to happen. There are so many research studies that show the reason why there's even this whole placebo thing is because when it comes to medications and different types of treatments, they need to do a control study. And sometimes they do a placebo. So when big pharma or whoever is doing research, some of them will do three, right? They'll do a control group, a placebo group, and then the actual medication. There has been studies that have found that the placebo, the sugar pill, actually performed better than the medication. And what they also have found is that when they told the participants that they were on a placebo, that a good amount of them, the medication stopped working because they stopped believing they got the medication. So that just shows that your belief in whatever you're doing is going to affect the result. So if you are doing something that you don't think is going to actually result in what you want, that's the result you're going to get. If you believe in your doctor's treatment, it's going to positively affect you. If you believe what I'm telling you, it's going to positively affect you and your ability to manifest. So you need to find people that you just wholeheartedly believe what they're telling you to help you start learning how to manifest better. That's the best thing you can do for yourself in regards to learning how to manifest is finding people that you believe in what they're teaching you and start to practice those things. So now let's get to how to shift your energy because being low vibe or having energy blocks is really just that you are at a lower level of consciousness, you're at a lower level of energy, and the manifestation that you are wanting is most likely at a higher vibration. Again, there's a couple of different things out in the web that you can find in Google and search. One of them is the emotional guidance scale. There's another one called levels of consciousness. The levels of consciousness and the map of consciousness was developed by Dr. R. Hawkins, which is from a book. Actually, the map of consciousness explained a proven energy scale to actualize your ultimate potential. I had to read it that way because it's funny. But that's a great book if you want to understand that and go into a deeper dive. I'm going to link all of this stuff because if you've never heard of it, you can be like, what is this? But on the map of consciousness, he has this scale, which the first time I saw it, I was like, wow, our energy, our emotions have these vibrations. And let me go look at the bottom. So shame is at 20. Love is at 500. I'm gonna say that again. Shame is at 20. Guilt is at 30. Love is at 500. Joy is at 540. Peace is at 600. And that encompasses bliss, joy, and serenity, 540. Anxiety, fear, at 100. Pride, scorn, at 175. Courage, though, is at 200. So courage is a higher vibration, but it's not like love. So you might be a very brave person, determined, but that vibration is more at a neutral state, meaning like if you you can use your courage to develop yourself, but it can also become into pride and it can take you down the spiral. So it's a scale. You can either go up the stairs or down the stairs and really one thought, one action can really shift you, right? shift that energy. So 
there's like I said, a lot of different scales out there. There's the emotional guidance scale. There's the emotional spiral, which is the one I usually share with my clients because you don't know what you don't know. And if you've never seen that, if you've never known like, hey, when I'm feeling bored, bored is actually at the bottom or it's neutral, but it is going towards a downward spiral. And if you are finding yourself bored, take that as a a signal of like, hey, I'm not doing anything to fulfill myself. It's not a problem with boredom, but too many days of boredom lead to pessimism, lead to frustration, doubt, disappointment, worry, blame, discouragement, until you get all the way to the bottom, which is despair. So I'll have these here in the show notes so that you can just look at them and understand what people mean by shifting your energy, shifting your vibration, if you've never seen that before, because sometimes it's like, what does it mean to shift your energy? Like, I'm not thinking bad thoughts, <laughs> even though we all think bad thoughts, just, you know, all the time. 99%, I think, no, it wasn't that many. But I would say 80% of our thoughts are repetitive thoughts, and a lot of times they're not very uplifting. So the traditional techniques that you'll see out here, you know, visualization exercises, which are great, affirmations, meditation, gratitude journaling, surrounding yourself with people who are uplifting, right? That they are going to help you get uplifted versus gossipy people, people who are just looking at the negative. It's going to lower your vibration, right? Especially if you feel the urge to dive into that. Trust me, tell me, you can tell me some gossip and I'm gonna be like, I wanna hear it. Even though I know that that lowers my vibration, right? Like, we're human, we're also human too. So and do not feel that just because you are walking this path of manifesting and spirituality, that somehow you're going to be a saint and not have bad thoughts or, you know, be looking at somebody and be like, girl, I don't know why you're wearing that. You're gonna have those thoughts and it's okay. And instead of shaming yourself for having those thoughts, just be like, "Mm, just laugh, laugh with it. Like just, it's whatever, you know, do not allow it to be more than just a thought. We can't stop and change our thoughts in the sense of like, somebody might just trigger you. All right. Someone wearing something tight fitting and they ain't got the body for it is going to trigger me to be like, judgy. Not something I'm proud of, but I'm not going to shame myself about it. You know, I will remind myself, hey, you go. You know, I can actually hear my husband. He's so body positive of others that it it really has helped me become more body positive of others as well. Like, you know, he is so empowering to people that do not have the traditional look of beauty that media has taught us. And that was one of the things that I really loved about him when we first met because, and I still love about him, but (laughs) you know, how often do you hear a man see someone who wouldn't be in my normal book of like, oh yeah, that's a, a body figure I want. And hearing him be like, oh, you go, girl, you know, like that is just so uplifting, not just for that person, but for myself as well. And for our children to know not to judge a person just because they ain't got the body shape that media says they need to have. So anyway, I feel like I went on a little tangent there. So clearing your physical clutter is another great way to begin to shift energy. If you want a simple exercise for that, move 27 items in your house and that will begin to shift some energy. So that is a very low way, low entry point. And I say low entry point, meaning like it doesn't take a lot of time. It doesn't take a lot of energy, especially if you're not feeling great. Beginning to just shift things and declutter things in your space, in your home, wherever you are a lot is going to begin to help you shift some energy. So 27 things. All right. 
So now on to the things that I've been doing recently and inspired me to do this episode for you on how to shift your energy. So I'll take you guys back. I had been feeling really run down. I am pregnant, so, you know, that has to do with that. We're in the between eclipses right now as I'm recording this episode. So energy is shifting as a whole, and that's going to affect us. Some of us, it's going to affect us a lot more. Some of us, it might actually bring your mood up versus down. But for me, it just brought me down. I had a cold, allergies. I'm feeling a lot better. I'm still sounding a little off, but it's okay. And yesterday, middle of the week, I'm still, you know, kind of, I'm not feeling as low energy, but I am telling myself, okay, the day before, I was trying to get back to the swing of of things, back into my work day, and I didn't take time to slow down as much as I wanted. So not only did I slow down, but I decided I'm gonna, I was gonna do a meditation. I was gonna do some light stretches and yoga to make sure that I move my body and that I'm active. I took the time to do that. And when I was looking for a meditation in one of my apps, I found one that said like morning miracles. And so I'm like, okay, cool, I'm gonna turn that on. And it was actually a tapping meditation. If you haven't heard of tapping, it is called emotional freedom technique. It's an alternative treatment for physical pain and emotional distress. So you can actually learn this anywhere, really, but it is tapping in the meridians of your body. It's like kind of like some of the acupressure points. And so EFT focuses on tapping on the 12 meridian points of your body to relieve symptoms of a negative experience or emotion. It helps shift your energy. Okay, so these are energy spots in your body, on your body, mostly on your face and head. And they help shift your energy and become more balanced it helps unblock energy. So if you have struggled to talk about your emotions to someone, this is a really great tool. So you can go look online on YouTube to learn about it more. Some therapists are actually certified to do this and you don't have to be certified to to learn from anybody. Just want to put that disclaimer out there. But there is some therapists that are doing this in their sessions as well. So it could be something that you could learn in therapy or practice in therapy. It is something that I plan on getting a certification to do more in my sessions, both in coaching and in therapy, because I think it's wonderful. So great happenstance. I see miracle morning, right? (laughs) Miracle morning meditation. Who doesn't want miracles? So I'm listening to it. And I just can't help but begin to have this smile. Now, I will say, when you are doing EFT, emotional freedom technique, tapping, it's going to be different for you than someone else. It really depends where you are. So the first thing you want to do is you're going to ask yourself, how are you feeling? What is your level of mood, energy from 1 to 10? Yesterday or when I did it, it was probably, I was probably at a, I would say at a five or six, pretty neutral, not very low. So if you're like at a zero or a one, you know, expect that you might, you know, get up to a three. The more that you do it, like you can repeat the whole thing again, like right after you finish your first round and you you move up those levels. For some people, they may be at a two and all of a sudden get to a seven because their energy got unblocked in those moments. You know, so if you find that your energy isn't shifting, isn't having a big shift, take it as a sign to know like, oh, it's not shifting because I still have that block going on, right? The thought that's going in there. So just know like there's a couple of different things you can do when you're doing the tapping. You can figure out where where are you feeling like it's feeling sticky or being like hard for you to believe in what you're saying? 
Because as you're doing the tapping, you're also saying statements to help you release. First, it's affirming your current thoughts, and then it's shifting your thoughts to something else. So Margaret Lynch is who I listened to a few days ago. So I listened to her first Miracle Morning one. It was like about 20 minutes long. And so then I Googled her on YouTube because I was like, oh, I'm going to share this with a few friends. And I sent that over to them. And one of them was on releasing blocks to increasing your income. Yes, it is possible to have blocks on increasing your income. And another one that I did and listened to was about releasing shame around debt. So Margaret Lynch is who I was using, but there's a whole lot of different people out there. So if you know you watch her, you're not vibing, don't worry, find someone else. So tapping. If you haven't heard tapping, it's a great way. Also, of course, physical movement is going to help you. So if you are needing to shift your energy and all of the more traditional things of like meditation, affirmations, visualizations, gratitude, is not motivating. You're just like, "Ah, I don't want to do any of that. Light movement. You know, look up some light stretches on YouTube. I always go and search it. If you're pregnant like me, find someone that's doing it for pregnant people. Also, make sure that you do a little bit of a warm up before going into stretching because you should be warmed up before doing any types of stretching. Yoga, of course, I always talk about doing yoga. So find some simple sequences for you to do. And then the other thing that is more related to us that you might have seen your mom, grandma, some relative doing is dancing. So today I went to the kitchen and I was listening to music and not just listening to it like out in the radio or anything. I mean, who has a radio anymore anyway, but I had my beats on, my over the years beats on, and I was listening to Spotify and I put on a playlist that they made. It was like Daily Mix something. And so, um, what's her name? Gosh, what is her name? Now I'm like stuck. What song was it? I got to look it up because it's going to drive me crazy. It was Past That Dutch. I'm in the kitchen and I hear Past That Dutch. Oh, that's it. That was it. That's all I needed to hear. So if you have a song, and even if you don't, just put on a random music on and see if something comes up. Past that Dutch came on, and I'm like, oh, what's doubt now, right? I started not just dancing, moving my body. I started cleaning that kitchen. I'm like, mm, 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 mm. And my plan was just to go warm up my coffee. <laughs> I cleaned up the kitchen, I swept it up, I took out the trash, like all of these things are going to shift my energy, not just in me, but in the house. And when the kids come in, when the husband comes in, they're going to feel that energy shift, right? Because the house is going to be more cleaned up than usual. That sounds terrible. I cleaned the house, but you know, I went in on it. And so dancing, oh my gosh, you know, our Latino community loves to dance. And I, even as I was talking about or thinking about talking about this, like who is not wanting to go dance at a quince right now? Like, oh, I need somebody to have a quince and invite me. Like just invite me to your random quince so I can go dance. I'll buy you a gift. All I want is to be able to go dance. <laughs> It is in us to love and enjoy. So, and different music is going to give you different vibes. Sometimes you might want to listen to Past That Dutch by Missy Elliott, in case you have no idea what song I'm talking about. And, or, you know, sometimes it might be, I can, I'm terrible with knowing artists' names, but I have now this stupid song stuck in my head. Ah, um, gosh, what is that song? I just, I can hear it and you already know I am not the best singer. So it's like, las manos hacia arriba, las manos hacia abajo, y como las gorilas. Oh, oh, oh. I know y'all know what song I'm talking about. Anyway, I can go on and on about dancing, but y'all get it. Find music that is uplifting. Because, <laughs> oh no, you might, I don't know, like some rock music, like my husband and do some head manging or something and 
for me, that does not lift my energy, but it may lift yours. So listen to music that is going to uplift you. And then if you want to uplevel that, use that energy to start to declutter. (laughs) Use that energy to start to clean areas in your house where you are finding stagnant energy, right? Like, oh, what have you been passing by that you're like, oh, this stack of clutter, this stack of mail, this stack of whatever. And that way you can shift that energy, right? Because it's about shifting that energy and get you more in alignment to what you want to manifest. Some other things you can do is, you know, cook and eat your favorite food, light a candle, your favorite scent, something that gives you good memories and good vibes of what you are trying to manifest. You can watch a rom-com. Well, I say watch a rom-com, but (laughs) watch something that lifts your mood. I love to watch rom-coms. I like to watch shows that are rom-coms, like those are my favorite, just quirky mo- quirky stuff. No YouTube or TikTok for this, because that can just lead to spiraling. And you want it to be something that is bite-sized, right? Not something that's going to take you out for hours, because that's not going to lift your energy, but something that you can kind of watch a little bit in to lift your mood if you are feeling stuck. And again, this is like a low entry point, meaning like you don't have to have a lot of energy to watch something. So, but make sure you time limit that. Now, if you are like, but I'm not really sure about any of these, here's an activity for you. So I want you to take a moment to imagine what the version of you that has manifested what you are desiring what would they be doing if you're working on manifesting an increase of pay, losing weight, more love in your life, whatever it is that you're trying to manifest. Let's imagine for a moment that that has happened. Take it in. What are you feeling? Who's around you? What are you wearing? What does your environment look like? What emotions are you feeling? Now, grab a piece of paper, journal something, pause this if you need to, come back to it if you don't have the ability to write right now. But I want you to write down 20 things that that version of you would be doing. Start off your sentence with, I imagine I would be dot, 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 and you complete the sentence. So let me do this with you all. The version of me that has manifested 12K in their business monthly would be, I imagine that version of me would be dancing a whole lot more. Mm, 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 mm. I imagine that version of me would feel light, would feel good in what they're wearing. I imagine that version of me would have less shame around debt and would feel proud. I imagine that version of me would walk around confidently. I imagine that version of me would, you know, show up on social media more and more knowing that my community needs me to help them, to help them learn these practices that have been taken out of us. They have been taken out of us. If you have not learned about manifesting within your family in this sense, it's because it has been taken out of us. You know, it was, we were told that it was wrong. And I'm going to go do another whole post and episode about this, about how it's in us. It's in us to be manifestors, but it was taken from us. Why would it be taken? Because those in power did not want us to have power. They wanted to disempower us. Anyway, not going to go into the dungeon right now, but, you know, imagine 
what that version of you would be doing and ask and write it down. I, you need to write this down. I was with a client yesterday and I was like, yeah, your chart, I could tell you don't write things down. We were doing a needle chart reading and I'm like, mm, you don't write things down, write them down. Okay. Now, from everything that I talked about on how to shift your energy, choose what works for you. Sometimes dancing will work. Sometimes watching, you know, something funny will uplift your mood. Sometimes just doing a visualization, affirmations, meditations will help you. You know, allow yourself to build your spiritual toolbox and have it there for when you need it and try to work on it every day every few days don't allow it to overwhelm you just pick something so before we end today's episode i did say that i would draw a card from this deck and let me go ahead and shuffle it so as i'm doing this my congestion is coming back a little as i've been chatting away with you all all right here we go card for today (laughs) i think this is hilarious it says raise your vibration is a mantra that caused me to light up hilarious i just think this is freaking hilarious thank you universe for the joke of like literally giving me the card that's on the freaking deck (laughs) in the name of it raise your vibration is a mantra that caused me to light up yeah i can have made that up okay i'm gonna look to see what it says and i will read that to you all and again as a reminder this is from kyle gray's deck called raise your vibration raise your vibration get it there i think it might even be the last card okay raise your vibration is the mantra that caused me to light up you know that raise your vibration is the step into the best version of yourself it's a call to action a call that reminds you of who you are why you are here and what you can do to make a positive change in the world today the universe is encouraging you to stay consistent in your vibration don't let yourself get pulled into limited thinking don't sweat the small stuff you are a powerful being who is connected to the infinite abundance you can call in help support and healing at any time It's true that your high vibes can challenge those who aren't willing to raise theirs. So don't force your ideas or truth on anyone else. Just stay self-aware and self-contained, knowing that everyone is doing their best with the information and awareness that they have. When dramas are unfolding around you or negativity becomes too much, just whisper, raise your vibration to keep yourself aligned with the highest and best vibe of the day i trust in the light of my soul all right that's a perfect way to end today's episode and just i love synchronicities i love (laughs) that soul thing right it's the whole thing we're talking about raising your vibration and you know, doing your best for where you are so that you can manifest everything that you are desiring and know that you are going to manifest it. It can take a month, it can take a year, it can take five years. I know you don't want to hear that it can take that long, but sometimes our energy shift takes that long. You know, if you have not had any positivity, if you have not had any upliftingness in your life, know that that's not your fault that you haven't had it before, but you can do something about it. And every step that you take is a step forward, even if it doesn't feel like it. I will talk to you guys next week. Thank you for listening to the Manifesting Latina podcast. Did you love today's episode? Please help us grow by leaving a review, sharing with a friend, or on your social media. Let's spread the abundance and fun of manifesting.